Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at solubility curves right now. We've already looked in class at saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. And we've talked some about the solution equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium. Uh, we'll be linking those concepts into these graphs here. But right now my goal is to uh, to get you to be able to use these graphs to figure out what kind of solution you have, saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated, and be able to describe that in terms of solvation, precipitation. All right, so the first thing that you need to notice, let's just take a look at this graph. Don't worry about all the lines. Let's just look at our axes. We've got temperature down here. As temperatures, temperature is changing, we're looking at the solubility. They measure that in grams of solute per 100 grams of water. Kind of strange units, grams per 100 grams of water. Um, that's just how we generally define solubility, is in those sorts of units. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at this, this graph here. You see lots of lines. They're all labeled with different chemical formulas. <coughs> These curves show how the concentrate concentration of a saturated solution differs at different temperatures. So here's sodium nitrate. You can dissolve 80 grams of sodium nitrate about in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, but uh, then at higher temperatures you can look at things like say 30 degrees Celsius. You could dissolve about 90, I don't know, 96 is what that one looks like to me. And we have lots of curves for lots of different substances, so we could say at that same 30 degrees we could dissolve, looks like about 47 or so grams of potassium nitrate. We could dissolve about 41-ish uh, grams of either ammonia or ammonium chloride. Those two lines kind of cross right about there at 30 degrees Celsius. So you can read the concentration of a saturated solution, the maximum number of grams of some solute that you can dissolve in 100 grams of water at a specific temperature. Now something I want you to notice, and we kind of pointed this out already, we looked at ammonia and we looked at ammonium chloride and we said that those lines crossed. Ammonia is decreasing in solubility as the temperature goes up. Most of these lines show that most of our substances increase as temperature increases. These are all solids that are increasing. Okay, so the solids increase in solubility with raising temperature. Gases tend to do the opposite. Okay, ammonia is a good example. Oxygen is another one. Uh, if water gets too warm, fish die. That happened to my fish in my classroom. Too bad. Um, let's look at this next page. We looked at saturated solutions. Here's our picture. So if I give you a situation where 92 grams of sodium nitrate are added to 100 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius mixed up, that'll give us a saturated solution. How would I know that from the graph? Well, I look at 25 degrees Celsius and I draw a line. You can use the edge of another piece of paper. I have magical lines that, that just automatically draw in there. And then you see, well, where does that cross sodium nitrate? My temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, crosses sodium nitrate at about 92 grams. You might say 91. We can agree to disagree. That's a saturated solution. If I add a little bit more of a solid, solvation, precipitation will occur at the same rate. We're at equilibrium. The concentration of sodium nitrate in the solution will stay constant. The amount of solute down at the bottom here will stay constant. This is undissolved here. You might say that added solute doesn't dissolve, which is sort of true, only it is dissolving. It's also being crystallized at the same rate, so it appears to stay the same even though things are both dissolving and precipitating at the same rate. So that's that dynamic equilibrium concept that we we're talking about. So what if we have another situation, say 80 grams of sodium nitrate, same thing, 100 grams of, 100 milliliters of water 
which is 100 grams of water as well, since the density of water is 1. <clears throat> 25 degrees Celsius, mixed up. Could we dissolve more? Yes, we could dissolve up to 92 grams of sodium nitrate. We're about 12 grams below that amount. We could dissolve more, so it's unsaturated. We could add solute. The thing could dissolve some more. And we can see that dissolving will happen faster than precipitation. A little bit of precipitation will still occur, but, but we don't have very many solute particles here, so that's not very fast. Unsaturated solution below the curve that you're interested in. Okay. Now, what about this situation above the curve, 25 degrees Celsius? Now let's try putting 100 grams of sodium nitrate Again, 100 milliliters or 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. You'd think you'd get a supersaturated solution, but it just ain't so. Only 92 grams will dissolve. Okay? So, what we see is when 92 grams of that solute have dissolved, so 92 grams of sodium nitrate have dissolved, we'll have 8 grams still sitting at the bottom. If a little bit tries to dissolve, well, precipitation is occurring at the same rate. So we've seen this, this show before, right? Solvation, precipitation occurring at the same rate. They won't even necessarily go into the same place like I'm showing it. Whoa. It'll, you know, you could have one stick down there. Maybe one comes off and one comes in, sticks there. So the crystal could even change shape, but uh, that's a little bit beyond the point that I'm really needing to make here. Uh, 92 grams will dissolve, 8 grams are still sitting at the bottom. So if you dump in more than will dissolve, it looks like you'll have a super saturated solution, but it won't all dissolve. You're just going to get a saturated solution. So how do you get a, sa a super saturated solution? Obviously I got one. You saw it in class the other day. <clears throat> you have to play some games. 100 grams of sodium nitrate will not dissolve in water at 25 degrees Celsius, but what if I raise the temperature to 40 degrees Celsius? Alright, now we've got this. We, we dissolve 40 grams. Look, that's under the line at 40 degrees Celsius. That's very attainable, only a little above body temperature. And then I carefully cool the solution down back to 25 degrees Celsius. Now, if I do this right, these 100 grams will stay dissolved as I cool it down and no crystals form. It's very unstable here. It's super saturated. If I add a little bit of uh, shock, I shake the thing up, add a seed crystal like you saw in class, maybe a scratch in the glassware, the stuff is going to start precipitating. The precipitation will occur faster than solvation. You'll see a crystal grow if I add a little bit more in there or somehow start the crystallization process. All right, so that is how you're going to be getting your super saturated solutions you have to play games with the temperature. Change the temperature to where it's more soluble, then lower the temperature again for a solid. In a gas, you do the opposite process. Um, so there we are, solubility curves. You should be well equipped for that worksheet now, numbers 1 through 10. I gave you some of the answers. So hit it.